my bravery has been working through the anger, finding the strength, because it's a lot easier to stay angry to me. Because when you're angry, you don't have to, you know, really deal with it. You can just be mad about it and and not face your fears. But I just, I had to really realize what it would mean in my life to be brave. Hi, friends. Welcome to Stories from 100 Days to Brave, a podcast where we hear real stories of friends who took the brave first steps to become who they truly are. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs. So today we're going to talk about an aspect of bravery that we've all experienced at some point or another. But in that moment, we probably didn't know we were being brave. I'm talking about when we simply show up for our people. There are a lot of things that make us not want to show up, like when we feel hurt or rejected or when we've experienced a loss. Trust me, there have been times I would have given anything to just run away or bury my head under the covers for like a year instead of just show up for something or someone when I didn't want to. Maybe you've been there too. Maybe you've been so ticked off about something that's happened that you'd rather hold on to that pain instead of doing the brave work of refusing to blame others and maybe even admitting that you're angry. What's so great about our brave story today is that when Leanne Whitehead realized she was angry at God because of a huge heartache she faced, she not only found the courage to tell God how she felt, but she continued to show up even when life kept throwing fresh heartache at her constantly. When Leanne kept showing up to do the hard things she needed to do for her family, she was a living example of the kind of bravery we may not easily recognize, but it's the kind of bravery that puts others before yourself. And that eventually brings your heart back to God when you feel like He's failed you. My name is Leanne Whitehead. I live in Mississippi. Uh, I'm married to my husband, Dan, and I have a five-year-old little girl named Tanner and a three-year-old little boy named Will. I just turned 39 during the quarantine, so it was an interesting birthday, obviously. I got married about two months after I turned 30, and as I look back, I think for probably five years before that, I got to an age where I just thought, will I ever get married? Will I ever meet somebody? And then I did, and I got married at 30, and we had both been independently single for so long that we thought we'll just have fun this first year and then we'll just decide to start a family and that's what we'll do and you know it'll be easy so we were at our year anniversary we started trying to get pregnant just wasn't working I had a wonderful doctor I did medication for like nine months and then it wasn't working I had a surgery I had a couple of procedures and he really thought it would work and it just wasn't working, and I kind of got desperate, and I'd heard of this doctor that was close to us, and so I kind of went to see him behind my doctor's back, <laughs> and he just looked at me. I was there alone without my husband and said, you should just give up your dream. You'll never have a child of your own, and you just need to move on. And so I, of course, left there devastated and I call my doctor and he says, come tomorrow to see me. And I go in and basically he just says, I don't care what you do, but never go back to that doctor. (laughs) And he referred me out to a fertility specialist. And so we began that journey and it was an emotional journey, uh, lots of ups and downs. And I started the process and I was about two weeks into my medication getting checked every other day, driving about an hour and a half there and an hour and a half home every other day to get checked and everything. And we were about a week and a half out from the egg retrieval. And the specialist called and said, Leanne, I just don't feel like you're responding the way you should. And I'm going to give you the option to stop and just basically give up. And, um, In that instant, I don't know if I was stubborn or if I just thought I've been taking shots for two weeks, I'm not going to quit. I said, no, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And so we did. And we went in the day of the egg retrieval and he came in and was very honest and said, I I really don't know if we'll get anything. If, If at all, we might get two to three eggs and I don't know if they'll even be any good. We don't see anything on the ultrasound that's very promising. So they take me in for surgery and 
I come out and by the time I'm in recovery, the doctor comes in and says, I don't have a explanation for this, but we got 12 eggs. And so we go home, we wait, you want to get to day five. We got to day two and they called and said, they're not doing very good, the embryos. Uh, by that time, I think seven fertilized and by day two only had five left. And he said, they're not looking very good. If you'll just, we're gonna go ahead and do it two days early. And it's kind of a shot in the dark, but we're gonna put two in. So we go in and he does it and I'm being monitored over two weeks and then they call and they tell me I'm pregnant. And we go in to see him three weeks later and everything is perfect. Only one took. And sitting in his office, he told my husband and I, he said, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no medical explanation to why you're pregnant. You should not be pregnant with what's gone on. And so my husband and I left that appointment and drove home and we kind of talked about kind of how I say in my story that it's like I felt like this was my story. Pregnancy was the first one was great. Uh, everything was fine. My little girl Tanner was born. She was due on Christmas Day. She came a week early and she was a big baby and labor was hard and it was funny. I said, Ooh, you've got to be careful what you pray for because this was not in my <laughs> this was not what I had in my vision, but she came and was healthy and she got to be about 14 months old and we knew we had three embryos frozen. So we decided to go ahead and they put two more in and I got pregnant with my son. One took and I had a rough pregnancy with him. And so I spent a lot of time on bed rest, but he came, he was also big and he was perfect. Life went on and then Will got to be about a little before his second birthday, and I just started noticing that he wasn't answering to his name, and there were just things that I could tell were a little off. He wasn't speaking. He didn't walk till he was like 21 months, but he was the happiest baby, and so people would kind of whisper the word autism to me, and I would think, there's no way. He's he's just not. I've read all these stories, and he, he doesn't have behavior issues, and he's not violent, and so we got him evaluated, and it took him a couple of months. They kept bringing us back, and April the 23rd last year, they called us and told us to come in for his results, and so we had to go about a little over an hour away, and we were sitting in this room, and the lady comes in, and I just broke down. I knew before she said a word, and they diagnosed him as nonverbal level three, which is severe. Um, and I try to tell people, I it was this moment in life that I've always envisioned other people having, wh whether it be you find out you have cancer or just this horrible thing. And I felt like the floor just fell out from under me. And I've never felt that level of desperation ever. I remember being so mad and thinking, God, this isn't the story I want. You already gave me a story. You know, like you gave me a story you pray for these things and you think God's going to wrap it up with a pretty bow and then he does it. And so that's kind of what I thought. It was like, I prayed to get married and thought it might never happen. I did. I'm like, there's my bow, you know, as I look back and then I prayed for these children and then I have them and it's like, there's my bow. When everything happened with Will, it was like, where's my bow? Like there's, there's no bow. I can't fix this. This is not something that's going to get better. This isn't something that's just going to go away. And so I had so many emotions and it just went from devastation to anger to helplessness. And I just, I didn't know how to deal with it. And within about three weeks, we had him in therapy. And most of these places had like six month waiting lists, but I just wasn't going to take no for an answer. <laughs> so we began that and that was in April of last year and we're kind of moving along and I am trying to mentally deal with it and hold it together for everyone. And so I remember calling my friend, I call her my prayer warrior friend, Stephanie, and I called her and said, I need you to pray for me because I can't for myself right now. There are just things I'm scared to say to him that I would never even say out loud to my closest friends because I can't imagine what you would think of me if you knew the feelings and the thoughts I was having. 
And so she just said, I will definitely pray for you. You already am. She's like, but you need to know that you don't have to be speaking words to him for him to know your heart. So just have your feelings and it's going to be okay. I had to find some way to turn my anger into something else. I followed Annie on Instagram and I'd read a few of her books and I would and listening to her podcast. And so last year when she did the first started promoting the Hundred Days to Brave, people were gonna read it together and kind of go through it at the same time. Honestly, when I started it thought, this is really gonna have nothing to do with me. Because it you know, in my mind, bravery had nothing to do with what I was going through. But as I started going through it and reading, I thought, Whew, it does. I mean Bravery looks so different. You think of bravery as these big, grand gestures and just being this strong person. And so when I started reading it, I was like, brave took on a different meaning to me than it did before. My favorite quote from there was, God knows that life is painful. So yeah, you can be sad. You can be angry. You can be confused. But you don't ever have reason to despair. Even when it gets tragic and dark, do not despair. You are braver than that. That was so encouraging to me because that is what I had struggled with. I knew there was nothing I could do about Will's diagnosis, but I was struggling with, what do I do with the anger and the disappointment? It gave me a validation that it's okay to be sad and it's okay to be angry and it's okay to not understand why things are happening to you. And... I remember praying and saying, I don't know what bravery is going to look like for me, but I know that I have to be brave enough to show up every day. That was my prayer starting. It wasn't even this big, you know, let's change the world. It was just, let me be brave enough to show up every day and to be present and to be thankful for the blessings that I have and not just to focus on what I felt like was the destruction that was just blowing up around me and my family. Like, I couldn't find the blessings that were happening because I was so focused on the anger and the hurt. And I can remember one night, probably about six months ago, I was sitting in my little boy's floor and trying to get him to speak. I just, my biggest fear was never hearing him say, Mama, or I love you. And we were working on a puzzle, and he's, he's so brilliant, and he can put these puzzles together in 30 seconds. And... It just blows your mind. And he looked up at me and said, Mama, without me telling him to say it. And I just remember as much disappointment and hurt as I felt in the moment I heard the words about him, I felt that much joy and just thankfulness. When I finally decided to be thankful, there's a part of me that thinks I get to experience so much joy every day. Because by the time my other child was three, she was talking up a storm and you just, you never think twice about it. And to watch the love his little sister has for him, she's excited when he says a word. And even though I know she doesn't understand what's going on, she knows that something's different. And I've heard children say things like, does he not talk? And she's quick to let him know. Not yet, but he will. I had to really realize what it would mean in my life to be brave. And to realize that it didn't matter what was going on around me, but that I needed to be present for my family. Because being angry at anything pours over into other things in your life. I would find myself being angry at my husband because I didn't feel like he was doing the right thing. Or my friends because I didn't feel like they were being there for me. Or just anything. And so I really just had to give it to God and say, I'm mad. I know you understand it. You know me better than anybody. And I'm just going to give it to you to repair. And then I read the book again, and not on a daily basis. I just thought, you know, I went day to day on 100 Days to Brave. So a few months ago, I just picked it up, and every night I would read several pages. And it was funny, the same things that I'd highlighted six months before when I was so angry, I would focus on those. And some of them were still pretty true to me. Like, I still felt those things, but I noticed a lot of them I had... I had moved on from that. I didn't have those feelings anymore. I'm sure to some people being brave is this big, big thing, these big gestures and going out and conquering the world and doing big things. And 
I didn't feel brave in that way. But I would realize sometimes when I would wake up in the morning, I didn't know how I was going to get through that day. And so that's why I say to me, the bravery was putting my two feet down and just getting through the day and showing up for my family and my friends. And, and just, I felt like I had to be my son's voice and I watched him and I tell people he is so brave because he is three and he's in, you know, 30 hours of therapy a week and he just marches right in and works so hard and I thought, if he's three and can be that brave and work so hard, I have no excuse to not be brave for him. I don't feel like I'm brave every day. And some days I feel like I'm the bravest person in the world. (laughs) Um, I think God wants us to have our wants and desires when they're in his plan. And I don't know what his plan is for me or my family or will. Uh, I wish I did, but I don't. And so I think it's just, you have to be brave to know that God has a plan and you have to be brave to accept it and just to ride out the storm. Wow. Did you guys catch the part where Leanne talked about how she had always gotten her bow, but life doesn't always look the way we think it should. And sometimes we get angry at God because the story we thought we had gets ripped away from us and we don't understand why. But through her anger at God, Leanne kept showing up. And you know what? God always shows up for us in places and in faces we would never expect. And when we can be honest with God and shift our eyes to searching for His kindness and His blessings, God will transform that anger into gratefulness. One of the things that really helps me see transformation in my own life is to journal. Y'all know this. You know how I feel about journals. It's so helpful to have this way of looking back on what's happened just now and even further back to see how God's brought me so far on this journey to brave. I believe in journaling so much that I've written one just for you to go along with 100 Days to Brave. I've dropped in some of my own thoughts on bravery and courage to help you as you catalog your own thoughts. I really hope it will be encouraging for you or someone you love who might need a nudge to move into a different place in their life. So you can get the 100 Days to Brave guided journal wherever you like to buy books. Hey, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this episode and this particular story. You can tag me, Annie F. Downs. That's how you find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere you want to find me. That's how you can find me, Annie F. Downs. So use the hashtags stories from 100 Days to Brave and 100 Days to Brave. They're in the show notes and use the actual number 100. And if you want, we'd love for you to share this story. All right, y'all, one more thought as we wrap up here. We all wrestle. We all wish things were easier and that our stories were filled with rainbows and unicorns. But the truth is, life can be rough. And it's okay to feel mad about it sometimes. But don't ever quit showing up, okay? You'll always be glad you did. And it will do your heart good every time. Thanks for showing up with me today. Thanks for being here. And I'll see you next time.